I'm going to show you how to do the brakes on the TW200. It's a 1990 model, so it's got the front and rear drums. I prefer to put mine up on a stand. This Craftsman stand is, sells for just under 100 bucks, worth every penny. I do put a strap on it, and don't ask me why I do that. I kind of found out the hard way. So put a strap on it, and uh, you'll be good to go. So first off, what I do is I remove this bolt here and it gives me some slack at the perch up on your lever. And the front brake cable is still a mystery to me. See how mine's set? It's all the way down. Yours will differ. I've moved this arm. I couldn't tell you exactly where to put it. More trial than error than anything. So then. I got that so I come up here and take all the slack out of this tensioner and all this if you read the manual all it says is to give you some um, I don't know what it's called feedback pressure or uh, just some slack in your lever it's not really made to, to tighten up your brakes but that's what I use it for so I remove this it takes a little effort but doable it should pop right out just like that. Now it gives me all the slack I need to remove this wheel. Now I use a, this clip here. You pr might have a cotter pin. I use this because um, I have more than one front wheel. And it's a pain to use a uh, cotter pin each time. So I use this clip. Okay. 19 millimeter, 22 millimeter, 22, nut, 19, bolt. Should have a nut and a washer. So this should slide right out if you have it properly greased. I you know I'm pretty I'm pretty good about my maintenance, so it should come right out. That can fall down. Here's your spacer, that can come right out. Now what I do is I go back and pull. And your tire and wheel should come right out. So here's your axle here's your bearings here's your other bearing and your dust seal and that can go be set aside so what you have here is here's your brake arm here's your speedometer cable held in with a little clip there's a clip and then an o-ring and then inside when your speedometer, when your wheel goes around, it's, it spins this, which is connected to these little tabs here. Those tabs hit these tabs and spin, and that's what spins your speedometer gear here. There's a snap ring here. If you take that off, all this will come out. Um, so we don't need to do that today, but I keep mine pretty grease because I go through a lot of water so I like to have it uh, nice and lubed okay this is actually the easiest part so here's your arm actuator so when you pull the brakes it actually pushes out on your pads your pads will hit the outside or your um, hub there the inside of your hub Okay, so to change it, make sure your hands are clean and there's no grease on them. You don't want any grease in your pads. Just pull. Easy, right? Now to reinstall, if you get new pads, or I guess new shoes, I, I, should, I should say new shoes. You will get the springs with them. I didn't know that they do come with them so you're gonna get this upside down no big deal doesn't matter which way you're gonna get them <laughs> put the spring on first 
I wrestled with these for about a half an hour till buddy said, "Oh, just put the springs on first. So I did. And it and it it worked. So you put your springs on first. Just like that. You come up here. Just pull. I'm pulling out a little bit of force and they should seat right down in there. So it's seated right in that below that head and then right on there and then I got brakes. And that's that's it. That's all I got to do. Um, if I've ridden hard on a, on a ride that day and they're glazed over, I take a little piece of sandpaper like this and just take off the shiny parts, dull them up a little bit, and, uh, and you're good to go. So to reinstall, see here's this, this is why I take this off of the perch so I have all this slack. Now to reinstall, Take a look here. I have grease, some good grease in there. I, I just did this a few weeks ago, so I'm okay. What I do is I take my grease gun, okay, and I bought a needle fitting that plugs right in the end, and I just take a little grease and I put right in there. I've had this piece break before. So I got some grease in there. Now this piece here is actually a sacrificial piece. It's got, it's kind of a keyway in there. It only can go in one way. And if your axle binds, your wheel binds or something, this piece will actually round itself out and just kind of free flow in there, which means your speedometer won't work. Now it's not a big deal to get you home, but I like to um, count my miles. So um, that's why I keep this lubed up because when I when it broke it wasn't lubed and that was my fault um, but just keep an eye on that and uh, just keep it with some grease in it so now we're ready to go to do the install this is why you put it on a stand and with the strap because without the front tire it wants to go backwards okay now I will grab some uh, grease I do like this bell ray, it works pretty good. Uh, a little on your finger, grease up your, grease this up. Don't need a lot because a lot will come off and you push it through. If this doesn't meet up very well, it's because those ears on your, on your, by your bearings and your hub and the little ears that work your speedometer are hitting each other. So you want to rotate one or the other and um, eventually you can get them so they're flush like this. I fought that before and I kind of figured it out. Now, okay, now we put our spacer on. I have my axle sitting there. And I just lift up in place. And the spacer is kind of a bugger. But it's doable. So lift up in place. Axle should go through, and axles through. So then we put our washer on. Nut on. Now we're going to torque to 65 foot-pounds. There we go. See our excess grease here? That's why you don't need a whole lot. Okay. And then there's two sets of holes in this axle to fit your P90 
pin back through and I don't think I've ever had it where it lines up perfectly. There's one there. Oh, there we go. It did line up. If it doesn't line up, I usually go a little bit tighter and it'll eventually line up. So I just give that a little squeeze just because. Now if you have a new cable, it's gonna be tough to get in here. But I've done this enough times where I've kind of got it down. Hopefully. Okay, now if you got a new brake cable, this is where it's going to be tough. Now, mine tend to do this at the bottom, and I don't know why. So I just give a little crimp. I don't know if I have a bad lever or something's hanging up, but this is the problem, and it went right in. I like to do it here because doing it here, to me, is just a pain in the butt. And I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just have never figured it out. Now I just give this, turn this until it's tight. Put this back. Now I do hear it dragging. So I want to back this off a couple turns. I do not want that dragging. Just a little bit, so I'll go back a little bit more. Just a touch, I'm gonna live with it. And then if you hit your brake and it stops. Perfect. Now for road, I tighten this up a little bit. I'll go out a couple turns. For off-road, I like it a little bit loose because I don't want to grab a handful of brake and have it lock up on me and um, have a front wheel skid on gravel or dirt. Okay, one last thing. This bolt right here, 10 millimeter, goes back on. And tight, and we're set. No dragging, pin, 65, this is set. Now, like I said, this is kind of still a mystery to me. If someone's got a better idea, please let me know. I just kind of, what I do is I kind of match the, um, the old um, cable and kind of not wrestle, but you know, it takes a little force to get up here and put it on the perch. Once I get that and I set my adjusters up here, it's, it's worked well. And I think this is my second or third cable. So I've done it a few times and it's it's work so okay now let's tackle the back okay so let's do the back the back to me is considerably easier there's just you don't have that cable to work with um, what I like to start with is I will take out this cotter pin now I use a cotter pin the back because I cannot seem to be able to keep a different kind of pin in there they will seem to fall out or come out or, or something um, yes I have to buy a bunch of cotter pins but you know that's the way it goes okay so um, after the cotter pin I take I take off my um, chain guard because usually I'm gonna clean my chain while you know while I do this so it's easier if I take this off this is an eight millimeter socket. Um, I did ride yesterday, so I the bike's pretty dirty. I kind of hose it down, but not too well. But so I will eventually clean this chain, and this will help. I stick this up top here to remind myself it's off because there's times I forget it. Um, I'll leave, try to leave in the morning in a rush and go, oh no, my chain guard. And the reason I leave that off is when I clean my chain with kerosene, I let it dry overnight. And the next day I lube it up. 
so I leave that off to ease the lube. So that's why I put this up here. So this to me means your chain's not lubed, lube it and put this back on. Just kind of a reminder. Okay, so my adjusters are on number seven. Uh, my chain slack is good, so I'm gonna keep it on number seven. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this nut. Now I have a wing nut, some other ones have a regular nut, whatever you got, take it off. Okay, that can just stay there. Now this just slides right out. Now I put these two back on together so I don't lose them. Okay, now same thing as the front. 22, 19, okay, 22 for the nut, 19 for the bolt, and we'll take it off. Now this is really where you want your uh, bike strapped down because this rear wheel is heavy and it will tip forward on you. So um, that's where it comes into play. Now you take this off, take your little snail adjuster off. Now you could mix these up left and right, but um, I think it'd be extremely hard. And I thought they were marked on here somewhere. Yeah, right there, R for right. So you know that that's the right one. Now I probably should have a washer back there, but I don't know where it went, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Now just give it a little push. So you give it a little push, okay? If it's lubed up good, it should slide right out. Now don't worry, because your wheel's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna fall, okay? And there's your axle. Okay, this one's free floating. Now the reason your wheel didn't go anywhere is because there's a spacer here, and then your hub here. And now it can float on this, that's, on this swing arm. That's how you adjust your chain. So what I do is I scoot it all the way forward all the way forward. Gives you all your slack in your chain. So your chain should be all coming right off. I usually hang it right here in my passenger peg. Okay? Now, it's, it's heavy and it should just slide right back. I like to hold here so this doesn't fall on the ground. Slide it right back. You probably heard that the spacer fell off, which is fine. That goes right here. Okay, and that can come right off. This piece comes right out. Here's your bearings. Those are double stacked there. Single stack with a dust shield there. And that can get set, set aside. Now here's your rear brakes. Same thing as the front, just a little smaller. You don't have the speedometer gears inside. Okay. So same deal. Now mine are glazed over because I went down a big steep hill yesterday and um, and then there is a crack right there. So these are gonna need to get replaced shortly. There's a little bit of life left, but um, they're gonna need to get replaced because of that crack. Yeah, I went down a big steep hill and rode these rear brakes. So that's why I have it glazed over like that. So a little sandpaper, I don't even know what this is, 180 grit. Um, I think I found it somewhere and I just been using it See how shiny that is that's not good So this little sanding okay, and same deal as the fronts These just come right off. No big deal. This is all one piece now. I do not move this you can, there's a wear indicator here that mine's been moved, so I don't know where it's gonna go. I go kind of go by feel of the bike and, and kind of what I need. So this wear indicator to me is kind of useless. But it's pretty cool. You know, it shows you, hey, your brakes are down, you better get new ones. But like I said, this arm's been moved on this spline enough times that I don't know exactly where which is which. So same deal, you're gonna get these brakes um, 
with springs and they're going to be loose so you want to do it just like the front you're going to pack just like this so put your spring on here spring on here and then uh, you know upside down backwards it's not going to matter you can only go one of two ways and either way you do it they're going to be fine um, i put my springs on top that's just me and um but i don't see a problem with have being them being underneath make sure they're clean there's no grease same deal they can't you can't go wrong with these there's a hole here and nothing here so i like my springs up hole here nothing here Just like that. Now I tried to put the shoes on and then the springs wouldn't work. Just it's they you get one on one would shoot, you couldn't hold the one and it was, it was a pain. So springs on both shoes, then put on just a little pull and you're good to go. So I'll just stick this back on. So this goes in here, floats around wherever. Okay, we need our spacer. Spacer just sits right there. Now, this groove right here on your swing arm fits into this groove right here. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to lift up, rotate with your right hand, get in the groove. Okay, and then make sure your left one's in there. I push it all the way forward. Okay, just something like that. No big deal. It's not going to go anywhere now. Now, take my chain, put it right, right back on my sprocket. Okay, boom. Then I take my axle. It's lubed up enough. I'm not going to lube it again. And it goes right in here. No big deal. Just pushes right through. Um, you want to make sure your hole here can come through the swing arm groove or notch out here and you're and you're through. Then you take your snail adjuster, put it back on. Now I was on number seven. Now what I like to do is get these just a little snug so they're not going to flop around on me. That's on seven. That's on seven. Okay, so seven. Well, this one moved on me. Now it's on eight. I went on seven. That's why you really got to look and you got to make sure you got enough light. Now, if I needed to adjust this chain, what I would do is I would walk this up one notch, and I'd come over here and walk it up one notch. Now, this side, because it doesn't have the chain on it, this will go almost all the way, but then your wheel's going to be like this. So, because the chain's not pulling back on it. So, I can walk up one notch, and I go this way. And I can't go any further. It's not, it's hard to do with by hand. So what I do is I go up as tight as it can go and back it off one notch. And I'm at seven. So now I know for a fact and I'm confirming to myself that it's, the chain tension still should be on seven. Now seven seven yours might be on three two one two and a half i call it two plus one two plus two you know what i'm saying um whatever you want to tell yourself and to and to get that um so you got eight and one two so you got two in the middle of each one so um anyways 
Mine's on seven, yours might be on two, might be on two and one notch, whatever you wanna call it, but just make sure you know what it's on and then you can adjust your chain accordingly. Now what I like to do is I like to put my knee right here in the tire. What this does is it pushes it forward so it's not gonna move off my notch for me. And then I tighten it. Okay, and I make sure that it's seated up against this tab on my notch, and it's up against it. I've had it where it's not been or been, you know, a different notch over. You gotta make sure it's seated up there tight, and so is that one. Now I can crank away. Now I still put my knee here, and this is also 65 foot-pounds. There we go. Okay, that's it. We're good to go. Now, for your rear brake, this is way using the front brake. You could have marked this where it was before you started and gone right back to it. You know, put a mark on the threads or count threads. I just put it back on. I kind of pull my arm until it's um, tight, then I tighten down my wing nut here, and I just spin my wheel. And if you listen carefully, you could hear it drag. So I'm gonna go back a couple. That didn't drag. That didn't drag, so I'm gonna go forward one. It did drag. No drag. So then I spin it, hit the brake, it stops. No drag, so there we go. Now, we need a new cotter pin. And I think my holes may have lined up. Okay, we need a new cotter pin. And luckily I have a bin of them. Because you do go through them. And just like that. Now the manual shows one way to bend them. I just bend them outwards. You do what you want. I've never had a cotter pin actually break or come loose. So that's how I do it. Give it a spin, make sure you're still good. Come over here. Slides right down, bolts go in. Okay, come back to our eight millimeter. And we're done. That's it for your rear brake. That's on, we're on seven. We're on seven, we have a cotter pin and no brake drag and good pedal feel. Now if this does feel good now and you come back an hour later and you're just kind of curious and you spin it and you get a little drag, don't be ashamed or bashful to spin that back another notch. Um, I've had them, I put them right back in the same spot one day and the next day it was totally different. So just go by your ear, if you hear it drag, or if it actually goes like this and just stops, or if it pulsates. See, I gotta go back another one again. Now that's pretty good. No pulsating, no catching and keep going. It goes forward and backwards and the pedal feels good. So that's it.